After watching this episode, I have only one thing to say. I ship them. I ship them very hard. Pokemon Ranger, I choose you. What's up, my dear boys and girls? It's your Ranger Boy here, and welcome to another review of Pokemon Horizons. And with episode 5, we basically have reached one of the more critical points of the anime, aka the first impression. Because a lot of people often decide after 5 episodes whether or not they are going to stick with the anime. So, how was this seemingly very important episode? Well, if you want to know more, then grab some popcorn, grab some cookies, and let's do this. We literally start the episode where it ended last week, with Liko sleeping at night while her and the Rising Voltaiklers are still stranded on a Kanto island, until their peaceful night suddenly got interrupted by an intruder. Doesn't really take a genius to guess who that was, but luckily we have Captain Pikachu dealing with the problem in a swift manner. And I know, I know guys, he's basically just merchandise, but I gotta say, I still like this little fella. Speaking of taking a liking to someone, let me show you this scene first. To be honest, this scene made my day. As soon as I saw that moment, my inner shipper has awakened once again. I ship these two. And not only do I ship them, but also funnily enough, it reminded me a lot of Amor shipping aka Ash and Serena. The girl thinking that the boy is suddenly interested in her, including her blushing for a bit, while the boy just being absolutely dense in terms of girls and romance. I really hope that this was just a one and done thing, or else we could see both Liko and Serena sitting in a bar and talking their hearts out about their dense love interests. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind at all because I love me some good old shipping. Well, putting that aside, after scoring Roy for invading what is basically considered their home. Roy justifies this home wrecking by stating that he wants to be Fuikoko's partner, but in Freed's mind he can't be his partner unless Fuikoko feels the same way. So therefore, the professor offers Roy to stay the night to spend some more time with the Fire Croc Pokemon. But no matter how much he desires the Paldian original, no one knows where he is, even after hours of searching and Roy asks himself if Fuikoko is even interested in him, until Liko shares her first initial problems with Sprigatito and how both of them became in sync after getting to know each other later down the road. And with that speech, Roy is once again motivated to be Fuikoko's trainer, and immediately starts singing again, therefore totally ruining the mood. No matter if Pokemon or girls, this man can't read the room even if he tried. God damn it, Ash! <laughs> I mean Roy. I mean just look at my poor girl Ola right here. Your nightly singing session and also for the most part the constant issues with the airship made her sleepless with eye bags almost as bad as mine. But at least Roy has a good idea by asking the island Pokemon for help with the first step being to meet up with his grandpa who turns out to be someone Freed is actually familiar with. But before the meeting we make a quick cut to Fuikoko waking up after sleeping in the storage room. But by the time he hears that Roy was actually on the ship to meet him, the adorable croc storms out of the room, jumps off the ship and now it's his turn to desperately search for his partner. Back to the meeting, Roy rightfully gets scolded by his grandpa for sneaking onto a ship and while the heroes have a lunch, both Liko and Freed come up with the same idea, to use the bug Pokemon's threat to fill the leaking holes of the ship. Returning back to Fuikoko, after not being able to find Roy, with sadness in his eyes, he wants to return back to the ship, until he spots the nearby explorers and overhears their plan on taking over the ship while also searching for Liko, causing the Paldian Pokemon to panic and while running like a madman, he also accidentally finds Roy and the others. Unfortunately, there's no time for a lovely reunion because Fuikoko warns them about the upcoming danger. So Freed rushes to the aid of his crewmates and it's Freed vs Amifio once again, with Amifio using Corvi Knight for a change against Charizard. I mean mate, I know that you're quite a good battler and quite confident in yourself and your skills, but that type matchup is a bit too overconfident, wouldn't you say? But credit to Corvi Knight, he actually holds up pretty well, despite the type disadvantage. Furthermore, we also finally see the rest of the Rising Voltaiklers in action. And they instantly lose against the other members of the Explorers. They actually lose so badly that Konya decides to go after Liko instead, with the belief that her comrade Zir, aka this guy, can easily take on the rest of the heroes. And funnily enough, he does! Not only does he handle both Madagross and Rockruff, but later on Molly and her Chansey come for support and he just one-shots them! Well goddamn! And I guess both Liko and Roy can feel their home being in danger since both couldn't stop shaking until their Pokemon were able to finally calm them down. 
sadly they weren't able to run straight to their friends because Explorers member Konya is there to stop them while she fondly remembers the good old times she spent with Sprigatito. Oh come on, it was one short afternoon. One short afternoon where they spent some time together and this girl pretends like it was some sort of years long relationship. So Liko distracts Konya while Roy and the other island Pokemon help the rising wall tacklers fixing the ship and right after that they face off with Zia. And needless to say, their first effort was, let's say, adorable. But then Roy starts singing once again, which even Liko, who by the way made quick business of Konya, finds pretty weird and a little bit cringe. And with Roy basically being a cheerleader at sidelines, Fui Koko finally is able to use his ember and actually lands a hit on Rhydon? Okay, I guess. But this success story just lasts for a short while because Amifio uses that opening to cause a sandstorm and with him about to kidnap Liko, the episode ends. So very open-ended and without any more hesitation, let's do some impressions. Like always, there were both good things about this episode and not so good things, but we will of course start with the good thing. The one aspect I really appreciate about this episode was the little amount of character moments that we had. With of course my favorite one being the short but sweet shipping moment between Liko and Roy, which straight up had some Ash and Serena vibes. But putting that aside, there were other moments I really appreciated. The overall display of Roy and Fue Coco and how they really seem to desire each other. The speech that Liko gave Roy about her first experience with her Pokemon. The inner dialogue moments that Liko had of constantly being worried and constantly feeling guilt. The moment when Amifio was quite annoyed because Freed didn't pay full attention towards their battle. And especially the moment when both Liko and Roy were shaking like crazy because they feared for their home to be destroyed by the explorers. I do think that these little moments of personality really made up a lot for the rest of the episode, which we will talk about in just a few seconds. I never think I still enjoyed even in last week's episode was the overall chemistry between Roy and Fue Coco and how they express their feelings through singing, which first of all is very unique and second of all I really like because, like I said in last week's episode, probably be a potential story for an evolution for Fue Coco later down the road, since the signature move of his final evolution Skeledurge is called Torch Song. And I believe that Roy will majorly contribute to that signature move thanks to his constant singing. Now let's talk about the not so good things. So, did this episode change my mind in terms of my first impression of Roy? To be frank, not really. Don't get me wrong, he's not a bad character. But at the same time, he isn't an outstanding character either. And people in my last video actually defended him by saying that his goal and his personality aren't really bad. And I agree with that. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, what makes him actually stand out besides the ancient Pokeball? He basically has the same goal as the Rising Bull Tacklers, finding treasure, exploring unknown places and encountering new Pokemon. Again, it's not a bad goal per se, but it feels like that Liko is actually the only character in this anime that really stands out, while Roy seemingly is just a character that just blends in with the rest. And my biggest fear is it's just that he will be forgotten or less appreciated than Liko, which, let's be honest here, that already happened since day one, you know, despite both being supposed to be the main protagonist. So I really do hope that there will be some major changes and development for him later down the road. But this will probably be the last time in a long while where I will talk about Roy in detail because there is still the potential of possible change and improvements. But what about the rest of the episode? The plot as a whole was good and definitely much better compared to last week's episode. But there are two things that I have to point out. First of all, the animation. The animation in past Horizons episode reminded me of what journeys could have potentially been, aka really great. But this week's animation brought me right back to reality and reminded me of what the journeys animation actually turned out to be, for the most part. Lackluster, short, no emphasis on quick movements or impact frames, and just overall really disappointing and underwhelming. You could argue that they are saving the animation for next week's events since the main focus seems to be on both the pendant and the pokeball, but then you have to also consider that this was the very first time we saw the other members of the Rising Vault Tacklers battle for the first time ever, and to treat them in such an underwhelming way while giving Free and Amifio all the spectacular animation highlights, to be honest man, I still feel a little bit complicated about that one. And speaking of the other members of the Rising Vault Tacklers, my second issue with this episode is the overall consistency and power scaling in this episode. Think about this, all the members that are not freed weren't even able to touch their opponent let alone harm them, while Liko and Roy aka beginners who just started their Pokemon adventure were able to actually land a hit on the explorers and Liko even defeated her opponent. Granted she had the type advantage and probably the excuse of Konya being quote unquote too in love with Sprigatito so I guess at least for her there is a justification. But a newbie? 
like Roy, who hasn't even officially become a trainer yet, actually does what experienced trainers like for example Orla and her Metacross couldn't do, only because he's singing like a cheerleader? I'm sorry if I sound harsh, but that was really odd and reminded me a lot of all the bad writing and inconsistencies that made Journey so infamous. So I really do hope that this was just an honest mistake and nothing more. But to sum it up in a quick way, this was overall a solid episode and for sure much better than last week's one, but still with some issues which can and hopefully will be done better in the near future. Anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed this, uh, hopefully not long review. What is your opinion on this week's episode? Tell me, and just like always, see you guys in the comments down below.